Welcome to Technado with Don Pizzette. Featuring sysadmin expert, Don Pizzette. Security specialist, Daniel Lowry. And Peter. Hello and welcome to Technado with Don Pizzette. This week with 100% less Don Pizzette than normal. Uh, we have Daniel, our, yeah. our regular over there. Daniel, how are you doing? I I'm good. I'm just worried that, like... I feel like this is a maniacal plot by Wes to get rid of Don, and now he's done it. Yeah, no one knows where Don is, but we know that the that hills Wes of Kentucky was the last I heard. Oh no! Yeah, yeah, we're tracking his phone, uh, so it's pinged off of, of yeah. Kentucky. But we have Wes Bryan joining us today. Wes, how's it going? It's going great. You know what they say: deserts full of people with bad attitudes. That's right. Wow. Yeah, Wes, you just came back from Kentucky, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not going to talk about that. <laughs> what happens right. in Kentucky? Well, I That's guess right. it stays there. <laughs> Yeah, six feet under. It got <laughs> dark real quick. It but, did. Uh, yeah. Wow, it's good to have you here, Wes. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Wish, it was, wish it was under better. Stay on his good side. Stay on his good side. <laughs> That's right. Hey, I got a story to start today that is just about as freaky as that. Um, so let's just go ahead and jump in. A lot of news to get to. Uh, our first one comes to us from the internet. Let's see, where is this? Mashable <laughs> Southeast Asia edition. Uh, Malaysia tests AI court sentencing despite ethical concerns raised by lawyers, and I'm, and I'm assuming defendants as well. Uh, but basically, they've now got a computer deciding your sentence. And I know, like a lot of places, have mandatory minimums or things like that, where it's like, oh, well, the sentencing guidelines say this. But AI now, what do you guys think? Is that uh, is that something you're in favor of, or thumbs up, thumbs down here? Well, I'm gonna. Could I, I'll go for yeah, first on it. this one, man, because I'm telling you what, I don't really care for Cortana. I don't want her making decisions. Cortana. I don't want her making decisions when yeah. it comes to uh, trials. Yeah, Siri handing down a sentence. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm fine with AI just determining if I'm guilty yeah. or not. Siri, Siri, what is the uh, the mandatory sentence for uh, you know uh, Grand Theft Auto? Two thousand years. Hold on. What? <laughs> no, be like here's what I found on the web yeah. for RoboCop Three. What? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, I didn't. That's, ask for that's that. not what I was asking. <laughs> Yeah. Better alive, you're coming with me. me. She turns into RoboCop. <laughs> and that's what this is. Yeah, this that's right. <laughs> you can't deliver me a web page, but you can deliver me a sentence. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I don't like this this approach because it can't take into account, you know, all kinds of factors that I'm sure go into sentencing. I mean, I imagine that there is still someone that has to sign off on this. Uh, it didn't get that deep into it. In uh, they, they have like just individual. abdicated their entire, you know, whole role as judge. I mean, this is to an AI. Yeah, even in Idiocracy, they had a judge. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but uh, are there movies Boy. like this that have had that have like a a uh, an what's AI a, that? What's a movie? Yeah. <laughs> It's the thing you get to see in prison uh, oh, on apparently. Saturdays. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about your AI sentence. Yeah. <laughs> no, I feel uh, I feel like there's some some movie where it was like you've been you know convicted already. And, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Well, I mean, uh, a, a Minority that. Report was kind of that way, right? Where yeah, they had precognitively yeah, it's kind of like figured that. that you will commit this crime, and therefore you are guilty already, even though you haven't done it yet. And it's like I don't know. I I feel like. While AI is is decent at doing certain things, it, it does a lot of things really really well. Um, if I were on the receiving end of an AI's sentencing algorithm, what are the factors that go into that? And you know, like I I believe in objective truth, but mm -hmm. does my AI understand that? Like, what's the epistemology of this AI? Yeah, <laughs> well, I right. Mean, We're gonna get a lot of philosophical like yeah. terms that go on. They they can't understand the fact that maybe the, it wasn't so much of a, like a, a, a horrible victim crime. Like maybe it wasn't a murder. Maybe it was a theft yeah. of groceries or something because the person was starved. Can it take that kind of thing into account? How much weight does go behind that kind of idea if it is factored in? Yeah, like it, the are they sorrowful? The, the Do, impact statements that uh, the victims' families might right. Make. Like, there's a lot of like intangible yeah. information that AI just can't process. At well, least, yeah, it goes to that same. You know, like, what's the difference, right? When you say a man or a woman, whoever, steal a, a parent stealing food to feed their family right. versus somebody that just stole a car, right? To feed their family. I, th I think the maybe to feed their. Family. Well, I, I think the <laughs> the prime example is that there there's this. Um, I see it on YouTube all the time and stuff of this judge in Providence, Rhode Island. 
And he's he's like a really good judge oh, no, because about, yeah. he's judging based off of circumstance. It's not just, hey, I'm here to letter dictate the letter of the law. There are usual factors around this. What was going on? Well, I was trying to pay my court fines. It's like the traffic court guy. Right. right? It's the traffic yeah. court guy. Yeah. And he... He's a good depiction of what we hope most judges are, which are yeah. discerning, understanding, human, and, right? Human, <laughs> understanding that, like, yeah. hey, if you went out and you just carjacked a bunch of people because you were high on drugs, well, guess what? You're going to prison for a while. But if you parked if you, your car illegally yeah. and maxed because you a ran bunch into of fines, the ER uh, to, right. to go see your wife who was having a baby, yeah, right? That's, yeah, that's he's fine. like, get out of my courtroom. You yeah. know, this this is a waste of my time. Yeah, I think uh, I think you're right. I mean, I think the, the benefits in this case there, there are. Um, you know, studies that have shown the prejudice that can go into a sentence, like, you know, based on your race, based on... So they on specifically said the, al- alg- the algorithm has no bearing yeah, with which race. Yeah, is, which is great. So it helps with those things. So maybe you find some kind of happy medium where we you say... we got a bunch of racist judges. Yeah. Well, I mean, there are some. <laughs> uh, maybe we find some kind of happy medium where we say the AI gives you a range, you know, and the judge can say, okay, well, I can pick but, between four and six years. But then you don't need you don't need the AI to sentence you. Like, this is specifically abdicating the role of sentencing. Yeah. to the AI do we agree with that obviously it sounds like we don't I'm, I'm not a fan I would I would thumbs down this mother there are so there fast. are certain things it's not a problem to go ahead and, and have a little human element we're right. talking about people's lives well because then what's the next step like it might be a slippery slope but it's a real slippery slope mm-hmm. it's not a not a fallacious yeah. slope it's like this will degrade into well since it does sentencing so well, how about judging? Yeah. How about what do we need lawyers? And what, why, this, we'll just feed a bunch of information into and it an can AI. Carry out the sentence too. Electric Judge, jury, chair. and executioner. Yeah. Right? Hey, there we go. And <laughs> the computer's already got power. We can hook that right, <laughs> right. into the chair. Yeah. Do you want to give a machine that level of of control? Uh, no, no. It's a no for me. No. Sounds like a no for no. Wes. I want people. No. Right, three want no's. To do with that. Yeah. So we are not moving to Malaysia. And uh, enjoying the jury system we have here mm. in the great U.S. of A. That's right. That's right. All right. Well, our next article comes to us from Pharonix.com and should not be as controversial. Uh, Oracle releases Solaris 11.4 CBE free for open source developers slash non-production use. Crappy brown excrement? I don't know what that's for. It's kind of redundant, but they were trying to get their point across. Common build environment. Uh, That's what what I was going with next. That's what they're going with. So this is... This is a, a Linux distro. Is that is that correct? No, that no. This is no. Unix. This is a Unix distro. Unix. Oh, yeah. Solaris. Right. Okay. Yeah. Right. So. Who, or Oracle. Who, who would use? I mean, this says for open source developers. So is that really the only audience for something like well, this? Well, traditionally, Unix, you couldn't get your hands on it unless you had, you know, money. Uh, you couldn't. Like Jurassic with, Park. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like basically. Stress. Yeah. Put it behind a wall of money. Uh, but no, you you couldn't get uh, like for instance Linux distros. You can go out and you can get them. You can download them. You can try them. But when it came to Unix, you'd have to have it on a mainframe and you'd have to probably be in the building to be able to work with it. So now that you can have access to it and people can actually work with it without having to pay thousands of dollars just to get their hands on, you know, access to it, I, I think that's that, that's kind of uh, big. Yeah, I mean, you're you got that MacBook over there, so you technically have do. a flavor of Unix oh, yep. running under the hood. Yep. But I understand this is like a more traditional. I, I actually ran Solaris once. Don mm-hmm. gave me a Spark Station. Oh. And I was like, okay, this is cool. Let me, you know, just try to get some experience with something different uh it, it was how foreign was that it was i mean from? so i i knew linux a bit right yeah. so this seemed like a natural evolution of understanding the 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 nix ecosphere it was weird it i didn't do a whole lot with it eventually I, i'm not running i wasn't running servers and stuff and then i was like if i am it's probably nothing that requires unix to do mm-hmm. so what kind of abandoned that project and went on to other things. Speaking of going on to other things, I don't have anything to add to this conversation. I mean, it's like, here. yeah, Are you good? it's available hey. if you want it. Yeah, and I guess that's the biggest thing is that now it's available and you don't have to spend thousands of dollars in buying it and putting it on a mainframe. Right, I mean, you know. Yeah. Or Spark system. They have a pay-for version if you'd rather that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd much rather pay for this if I can get it free. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Screw free. I assume that's just you're getting... It can't be good if it's free. You're customer support then. No, I don't know. It's probably paying for the... Cl- I don't I have no idea. I don't follow Unix 
like builds. This was this was, you know. Hey, what are you gonna do? do you? No, I don't. How about you, Wes? Nope. I think Don picked this article. All right, let's. Move Don, on. on the other hand, loves that kind of stuff. Don, Don <laughs> said this is uh, the most pure form of Unix. Um, so, <laughs> do you know what the street value of this Unix is? Oh man, <laughs> <laughs> name the movie, Wes. Don cut. Can you name? Yeah, movie? can you name no. that movie? No, you guys. You do. Know. You know it. Yeah, movie, better off dead. Yeah. yeah. Classic. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Moving on. Like, Give me my two dollars. Yeah, two dollars. Uh, he's skating or skiing yeah. with one ski. All right. Uh, <laughs> this next article is from ArsTechnica.com. Shameful. Insteon looks dead, just like its users' smart homes. The app and servers are dead, and the CEO scrubbed his LinkedIn page, and no one is responding. And I'm uh, so basically, it's this, like they broke up with their users. It sounds like they're ghosting them. Yeah, but good, good luck with the support. Exactly. What, yeah. What support? So, so this is basically Insteon is a, uh, a manufacturer of some smart home security products. Talking about um, you know smart lights and, and cameras, things, sure. all, all those kinds of things. So, uh, you know, I'm I for one am all for you know going with small brands when I can, or 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 you know shopping local or whatever, but. This is the argument against that of saying, mm. go for the ring camera, go for the, well, we've talked about Waze, even though they've got security issues in the past, but yeah. go for the ones that you know that infrastructure is supported. But I'm curious, could you, do you think you could still take these devices and and put them onto another system somehow? So the not? answer to that is absolutely yes. Yeah? Yeah. So there is um, an open source project called Home Assistant okay. that you could hook these into... I believe. I'm yeah. not. I'm I mean, probably, sure probably not how, the, the I, I average use home user. assistant. Um, well, it's a so home assistant is for like you don't want to depend on a third party infrastructure yeah. to run your or to have IoT access system. to your cameras and things or to have access yeah. to your camera and things. You control that stuff. So I think you can hook these into that if I'm not mistaken. Um, I don't see the one thing that's a problem with this is they weren't using standardized communication protocols like Zib okay. Zigbee and stuff. Right. Um, they Z were using stuff. Yeah. yeah, exactly. They were using their own proprietary stuff. So when you've got somebody that's got all of the intellectual property around it and they go out of business, well, who's going to support something that's, you know, basically closer? I did read that their their source had been reversed. Oh, really? Okay. So that's why you can hook it into something like Home Assistant. Okay. Gotcha. Right. And if they were going to go, I, th I thought there, are, there was parts in the article that made a really big sense. You're going out of business. Mm -hmm. You kind of know that that's happening. Tell people. Why not? Oh, A, tell people. If you're done, open source the B and let people have it yeah. that have already bought the thing. Sure. So they can do. Is there a negative to that uh, from a devil's advocate perspective? Because you, are to you open sourcing, sourcing it to the hackers then too? Absolutely. Yeah. But um, yeah. here's the thing. The open source community, if they they ran with it they will start looking for security issues and then somebody could fork this project into their own project and it would get some sort of support the problem is is that i now have devices that i can't use mm -hmm. if you don't open source and the other thing about open source software there's a lot of like useful open source software that gets used all the time right sure and it gets supported by the community. The community looks into these things, and that's the way it's supported instead of by paying people to constantly do that for you, mm. right? So it, it's, I, I don't really find that to be a, a great argument against open source because there's plenty of open source stuff that people use that is production level. Like, oh, I say production level, I mean enterprise productions that use that kind of that use open source software. So big whoop, right? So make it open source so that people, especially if you're going out of business, who cares at that point? Are you going to like revive this thing as some other platform and and reuse that code? Yeah, luckily it does say here that uh Insteon's protocol has been reverse engineered for a while now, so yeah. it's possible to control the devices locally without the app. Cuz that would stink if you were like I can't even use this this you know light right. switch anymore. They said that the worst yeah. case scenario is it becomes a dumb switch. Yeah, yeah, yeah which is which is better than yeah. It's just now I got to just throw away this. Yeah, and you mentioned uh, op, uh, was it Home Assistant? They yeah. said that there's another one out there called Open Hab, and it's got a Home gotcha. plugin that you can get on you know, Instance Network. Uh, we're working with Apple's HomeKit, so you can even bridge it over to Apple's HomeKit too. Here's the thing, right? It is tough. You're picking out IoT devices. I mean, it's not going away. And they looked like they were doing really well. At one time, they were quite prosperous. Mm -hmm. 
and whatever happened, and now they're not. I wouldn't be shocked if somebody closing. still jumps in like an Amazon and buys this now for for basically nothing. And and yeah, the thing. problem though is like if you've only got like really one manufacturer, there's yeah. no competition, and that's bad for the consumer. Yes, right. Competition breeds lower prices, better product. Because now, if you have to compete with my product, yeah, then you're gonna have to compete with price and usability and quality. Yeah, it's not great. Because if you're industry. just you, yeah, you're just like, hey, listen, I'm the only game in town, Blair. You want some <laughs> IoT? You got to come to Big Daddy, yeah. right? And, and IoT. Yeah, and that's why you got to do your research, you know, um, and find out what are they using. Are they using something that's only their intellectual property? Or are they using something like you mentioned, like Z-Wave or ZB? Mm-hmm. You know, are they right. using these protocols yeah, that can be used by else. the industry? Yeah. yeah, I mean, at one point, Z-Wave and Zigbee were weren't big. Yeah, right. right? Right. They became the, the standard. Everybody decided these seem to be the best. Let's use that. Mm-hmm. Now, once that happens, you better have a really good alternative if you're going to not use the standard thing. Mm-hmm. Because now you've got to make a case for you need this. It's better. Yeah, I'm using something new because I don't feel that secure. Or, right. There's there's problems. I can make it cheaper. Right. It doesn't have mm, – it's nice, but it could be better if yeah. you did this, which is exactly what we've done. And now, oh, okay, that does make sense. Especially if you could take something like Z-Wave or Zigbee and make it like backward compatible. It's compatible with that and does the features that it should have done in the first place. Yeah. And what's scary here is, you know, like I said, you can still use this apparently through this app, but this means the app's not getting updates. Right. The devices aren't getting updates. So once there is a zero day, that's staying. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, you're... Uh, no one Unless you're really good system. at programming and you've got that open source, so yeah, <laughs> then you probably have your own setup. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, custom, custom made. Yeah, it'll go from like people building their own PC to now people are building their own smart, you know, home. everything. Yeah, with- I was telling Lauren uh, the other day, like she was like, "What's a good Raspberry Pi project?" I go, "You know those Peloton mirrors? You can build one with a Raspberry Pi." Really? Yeah. Hmm. And 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 a mirror. Uh, it's like a TV <laughs> and a, and a mirror. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's, it was a cool project. I saw. I was like, oh man, do I want to invest in this? Though, like, I wouldn't use it because look at me. Yeah, oh, clearly, I'm chubby. <laughs> <laughs> the last thing I need in my house is a mirror. I ain't working <laughs> out. Yeah, look at how fat you are, Daniel. This is your daily reminder. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> man, big old belly you got yeah. rocking there. <laughs> but you could take that same technology, and I've seen like in fancy hotels, like when they have the TV behind the mirror. Oh yeah, or the weather on the mirror. Like, hey, if I can get sports scores while yeah. I'm on the toilet, that's kind of cool. Hey, <laughs> we can take the same technology. Yeah, that's true. I don't have to. And you didn't have to buy a three thousand dollar Peloton mirror. Yeah. You know. You, I like that. All right. I will get to work on that. I will report back next week and let you know how <laughs> coming along. All right. Let's take a look at our next one here from Tom's Hardware.com. Dell's proprietary DDR5 module locks out user upgrades. So it is a double edged sword. So obviously, we know one side of the sword is it locks out user upgrades. What's the other edge? Is, is this a much better uh, setup for some reason? Uh, I think this goes back to the days of Rambus RAM and DDR RAM, right? We had those Rambus modules way back in the day, and uh, that you know all the memory manufacturers got together and said, "Hey, let's agree on some kind of standardization." And the Rambus company decided not to follow that standardization, and um, essentially their modules became very, very, very expensive. So this is a, a proprietary design that means that if you want an upgrade. You can't go to Newegg. You can't go to Tiger Direct and just buy memory modules like we've all. Well, I, I don't know if you have, Peter, but I know I've seen you update I have a not. computer. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, where you're like, <laughs> I hey, I want more than 16 that comes in the, what is it, the Precision 7670 laptop, right? We can go to a place we could uh, down, or download, buy, uh, you know, the newest DDR modules. And if yeah. it fit the board, you could put it in yourself. But now they're saying, no, if you want these modules, you can upgrade. But only Dell's going to sell them to you. You're right. only going to go to Dell to get them. And so I, I'm I was excited about this article and that you were going to be on today because I wanted to hear your opinion on this. Um, so Apple, mm-hmm. you're not upgrading, mm-hmm. right? It's soldered in. Mm-hmm. That ain't really happening. Doesn't seem to affect their business model too much. They're doing rather well. Mm-hmm. Is that going to be the same for here? It's like, well, it's kind of like if they sell it. Maybe uh, I put it that way. If the if Dell sells this, like we're like Apple. But you can actually upgrade your stuff. 
would that be a, a good way to go about this? It's like, who cares if I'm the only way you can get this? If you if you're running a if you're running a Mac, you can't get anything at all. This you got to buy a whole new computer. There is something to be said about that too. So we're kind of giving you that Mac like experience, but in PC land, you know, we're kind of melding the two things together. And really, and if you look at it, I mean, this isn't the first time we've seen so You, you gave a good example. Another example would be uh, something like um, Intel's Octane memory. Hmm. Right? That's all proprietary memory. You right. know, and it's used inside of their servers and stuff and higher end, uh, you know, computing devices. And it's called Octane. Yeah. So I need I, that. I, absolutely. Oh, God, I have it. You know? <laughs> Uh, octane plus. I'm, I'm about to sell a liver. You put a plus on it. I can sell my liver, right? Yeah. I don't need liver. Yeah. Liver's the thing I, I, I get. Know, I know this guy. Just, just yeah. talk to cool, me. Cool, cool. Uh, but yeah, uh, you know, I, I'm all. I've always been for standardization, but I also see from a company's point of view when you are controlling the hardware, then you're also controlling the quality of that hardware. Um, I, not saying that it's so, worth five thousand dollars for. So you're years. saying that if it's, if they're the only game in town, then there's no competition. That's good. That could pose a problem. That could pose oh, a bad. problem. Gotcha. Yeah, that could pose. That could pose gotcha. a problem. I'm for standardization all the way. Because yeah. Then that way, you know, it's not like the back back in the early days of the eight, you know '80s when computing was uh, kind of like the wild wild west. Everybody was doing their own thing, making their own stuff. Yeah. And if you bought this one component, you would get vendor locked. I'm very very against vendor locking. It seems like so. What I when I was reading the article, they were saying that they they wanted to make the thinner lighter better laptop they wanted this thing to be a really cool laptop they wanted to be awesome and that is why they chose to create their own form factor so that they because if they had to plug in a standard uh ram module it was it they wouldn't been able to do this Mm -hmm. right so i mean if i'm dell maybe this just you know cost of benefit analysis is not something i've done for them uh, but maybe they they ran the numbers and said if we offer both of like if if we give you a fatter laptop, thicker you know not as great as what we would like, but you have the ability to you know upgrade the RAM, and we offer our light thin slim model, that's really not going to work out monetarily. Well, I feel like so. Let's just go with the cool thing. It's a numbers game too because I feel yeah. like you know in the IT world we think about upgrading those things all the time. I feel like. The average person, you know, maybe eighty percent of mm-hmm. of the people buying laptops are never cracking that case and and upgrading. You, you you make a good point, Peter. Like really, and, and uh, you do, you do, <laughs> and, <laughs> and and I would say this, Wes, riddle me this: uh, your work laptop. When's the last time you upgraded it? Oh, I, I don't. Upgrade. You don't, right? Uh, what do you do? Every three years, you buy another one, right? Buy yeah, you you pretend right. it's so. Broken. It's like yeah. right. You or, pretend or it's or I break it, right? Yeah. <laughs> or and it out the window, and that gets water. repurposed yeah. to somebody like drink. Peter, who doesn't need to upgrade, right? right? Well, <laughs> this isn't new. <laughs> well, back to that point uh, that you made, uh, Peter. When you look at it, twenty percent of the consumers actually dictate how the whole entire industry moves. Yeah. and those right. two de- demographics, excuse me, gamers. Right. And right. enterprise. Those are the ones that move. Yeah, that's right. driving innovation. This, this so, is an enterprise level laptop. And that not was, a, yeah. So who cares that it can't be upgraded? You're going to yep. ditch it in three years anyway after support runs. Yeah. Up. So mm-hmm. they know, yeah, we're, hey, we're going to get a little pushback on this, but it's going to be on these tech right. blogs. It's going to be, you know, these people talking about it, not, you know, the right. student that's going to. The, the to person that's going to upgrade their laptop in anyway is never going to use that yeah. anyway, was never going to buy this laptop. Yeah. So why not, why not just go right. for what makes, you know, the, the purchasing decision. Right. Like, Hey, it's thin. Look at this thing. And internet, listen, I use the word never, right? Let's not get crazy. That was a generalization. I'm using hyperbole nope. to nope, make you a point. An absolute. I know, I, I know. I can hear it. Listen, please, Daniel. Yeah. Tell, tell <laughs> yeah. Daniel how he's To, to Don <laughs> at ITPro.TV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What did we, we share sign an him account. up for? Yeah. That's right. We share an account. <laughs> they're, they're just going to mistake me for Wes anyway. So. That's okay. That's, That's okay. <laughs> Happens all the time. Yeah, with the long hair or the short hair? I don't know. <laughs> the, one, the annoying one. That's why I grew yeah. my hair out. Yeah. I was trying to make it. Yeah, we easy. kept getting. What was the other kind of ram you were talking about? Not no, uh, it's just rambus. Uh, so uh, sounds like a, an Egyptian guy. It yeah. does, but it, uh, all hail the, the day, mighty their, rambus. <laughs> their memory was faster than everybody. They sat down with that consortium. They all agreed on it, and uh, they ended up producing something that was a lot faster than what everybody else was producing. But it was also a lot more expensive mm-hmm. uh but, but they're still in business today so it didn't it, ultimately it didn't hurt them too bad hmm. well, good for them well speaking of being still in business you know we've got to pay the bills here oh. so <laughs> let's take a quick commercial break come back we got a couple more big stories to talk about some of the bigger ones this week so let's take a look at those right after this here on technado with don Pizzette.
My name is Dana Morrison. I'm the IT Director at Grace Christian School in Raleigh, North Carolina. I work with two technicians, Buddha and Anthony. We cover all grades at the school. We figure that we support approximately 800 end-user devices. My name is Buddha Nepal. I work as IT support here and AV specialist. I moved into IT department and and on our first meeting, other team members asked me, hey, what's your IT background? And I was like, I don't have any. We have this SharePoint project that we're rolling out. So I was able to go to IT Pro TV and um, watch. And by the end of this month, we were actually migrating all our files to SharePoint. I can use IT Pro TV's uh, supervisor portal to check the progress of my technicians so I can see what they're looking at. So when we were doing SharePoint training, I can go in and I can see that Buddha is hitting on that content. I really want to see hands-on how they do things. And if there was an IT Pro TV, I don't know how I would have done that. IT Pro TV has given us the ability to level up our technicians to a point where they can decide, this is important for me to learn and go out and learn. At home, I have Apple TV and there is an app there. And so I actually watch on Apple TV. I I watch it in my iPad too. Saturday mornings, I still get up early. 6.30, I go grab a cup of coffee. I sit down on the couch and I typically watch two or three episodes uh, as I just kind of increase my own learning skill set. I would recommend IT Pro TV uh, to any IT team that is looking to extend their knowledge. Uh, it offers a great, easy to access, interactive, entertaining, uh, environment. It's just a great tool uh, for any IT professional. The IT Pro TV app is available for iOS and tvOS. The modern user interface makes navigation easy. Recently watched videos can be found on the home screen, as well as our daily live streams. Choose landscape mode for larger viewing. Access the entire course library by clicking on the play icon. Navigate our content by category, certification, and job role. Learn where you want and when you want as a premium annual member by downloading episodes for offline viewing. Watch on the go and pick up later on any of your favorite devices. So head to the App Store and download the IT Pro TV app. Oh crap! We we back. Well, we're back. Yeah. Bills are paid. Bills are paid. All right. Yeah. It, I mean, it's it's just our own ads. We're just it, we, <laughs> it's just our we own ads. We're not getting real sponsors yet. <laughs> so it's one of these. We'll yeah. get there. Yeah. I mean, someday we'll have to do the same thing every other podcast does and say this one's brought to you by Squarespace. <laughs> <laughs> Free plug for Squarespace right there. <laughs> yeah, but it's not because they it's suck. Not. Yeah. Because <laughs> they don't give us money. when they're not amazing. I don't, yeah. I'm very confused. Uh, we're, we're a WordPress. <laughs> we're Team WordPress press over here yeah no joomla actually i think our website is on wordpress is it it is yeah yeah it is on WordPress. sorry about that that's, that's what just give away all our technology <laughs> yeah we use haskell and aws and <laughs> and what home security system do you oh yeah, 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 yeah. all right well let's take a look now at uh, uh who got pwned in this particular week looks like you're about to get pwned fatality yeah Really proud at adding uh, video to to that audio. <laughs> one of the, our favorite intros. So we've got the uh, the guy who I think he's the one that, that got pwned in that that episode by Cartman oh. uh, on that point. So, but let's take a look at something a little bit more current. So this one comes to us from uh, GitHub's own blog. Security alerts: attack campaign involving stolen OAuth user tokens issued to two thir third party inter or excuse me, you got integrators. This. I said interrogators. Yeah, Inter <laughs> man, you know we were going to use our in house interrogators, right. but we man, that. we gonna outsource that. Yeah, this guy gets right? confession. Plausible deniability. All right, so so basically, uh, OAuth is something. I, it I know is that used uh, through Facebook or something. I know it's like how you can log in mm -hmm. to. Single sign-on. Single sign-on, yes. yeah. Yep. But is that the one Facebook uses? Is I don't you know, know who they no, use. Okay. But anyway, yeah, OAuth is is, uh, is something. So they, they have to issue tokens then to the people that are using it. So we're saying basically two of those got compromised? Mm. 
Essentially, what it looks like is it looks like they've got they've got access to those tokens, and now they can basically write to the uh, GitHub uh, repositories, basically put any code they want up there. Well, that's bad. Yeah, it's very bad. Does that just mean that anyone that uses OAuth and a GitHub repo is a potential target then? or So they specifically said two specific vendors yeah. were the problem, Heroku and Heroku. Travis CI. I know Heroku. Yeah. We've, we've used that. So Travis CI is a um, CI CD platform. So if you want to build and test and continuously deploy your code, you use Travis CI to do that, and it makes I would all like that, to do that. That's very. Nice. It's it's its intention is to make all that very simple, a unified platform. But they they had their OAuth tokens kind of kind of stolen, and now the code that is stored that that is, runs Travis CI yeah. is now suspect, mm. right? Yeah, we basically Did, need if to they roll had, back right, to, if they had con, if they had um, the ability to reach out and touch and modify the code base. That means if you're using that, it could be compromised. And anyone who has... And same with Heroku. Yeah, who, who yeah. has downloaded and run that right. that code. Yeah, okay. So th that, that's a problem. That I, is that an issue. A big yeah. issue, yeah. yeah. So this is why, like, I'm not a huge proponent of single sign-on. I understand the... Because it's a single point of failure, then. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. If I get your token... You get one, you get all. I have e access to everything that that token has access to. Now, which is the same... Could that same argument be made about like things like LastPass and other password storing things? Like, you've got... So, password managers... Yeah. If, if you gain access to my LastPass master password, then yeah. yes, you have now access to all of my stuff. Right? And this is why... Doing like security with authentication is wicked hard, and why you add multi factor to it goes okay, you've got my passwords, big whoop de doo, because you still have two FA yeah. to get past, right? It's only one part of the equation. Whereas with OAuth tokens, it can be the same thing. If there can be, right? If you have an OAuth token, that's great, but you still need to do a second factor. But my, I don't typically see that a lot. With yeah. with that, it's meant to be a single like click and you're in to everything. Well, I like seeing this, uh, you know, this report being on the GitHub blog itself because yeah. they're involved here, obviously. It's due and, diligence. Yeah, I know they're mm. they're they're saying throughout here. You see a couple times where like, well, we don't believe they got in through here. We don't believe it. You know, it was our fault or that kind of thing. But uh, at least they're the ones sharing this information and sharing. Uh, Oh, that also impacted GitHub and NPM. Yeah, the uh, yeah. Node.js packet manager, yeah. I believe, right? Now, we were just talking about this the other day. You were mentioning about, hey, if I could gain access to that API key, I essentially can gain access to what I want. And this is a compromised AWS API D this, key. This, so I've been, I mean, this yeah. was the conversation This is exactly we <laughs> what I've been working on. So I'm working on building like an AWS hacking series for IT Pro TV. Mm -hmm. And it's all about, and a lot of it is all about stealing keys. If you can find a key... Guess what? You get to do a lot of stuff, and there's. Yeah. It's weird how you'll be able to leverage the if if you have a key and you double that with not thought out permissions for what the user or the owner of that key can do. You might be able to leverage that to privilege escalation. Once you get to privilege escalation, well, now what can you do? Well, depends on what I've asked into. Right? Yeah. If I've escalated into some sort of like root style I am or admin I am user into AWS, I do what the hell I feel like doing. Mm -hmm. Right? I can spin up EC2 instances, start crypto mining, I can I can store stuff in S in, in S3. Even I S4. Can, I can, you know, if I'm feeling all strong. Up to S4. <laughs> yeah. E E C three. Right. But it all it all hinges on the idea that you have found some exposed keys some way, shape, or form. Now, what's interesting is, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Wes, you probably read this article as well. Um, it didn't say that Amazon was the problem. They are, right? No, it, it says nothing about that. It says it was a compromised AWS API key that was exploited to get access to but, the MPI. But they don't say how it was exploited. They no. don't know how they got it. No, but right? they exploited the uh, the package manager, the NPM right. uh, infrastructure. So it could have been through phishing. It could have been mm -hmm. through any number of different ways they haven't said they didn't say that it was like an open s3 bucket yeah right they didn't say any of that Which kind of stuff the normal uh it's very common yeah. yeah 
So, yeah, that's interesting to see. But, yeah, it basically says also, you know, GitHub uh, has not identified um, – or it says they will notify directly of the accounts that, that they have identified as uh, being impacted. So there are know. other services that you will find AWS keys in, like like um, Bitbucket, mm -hmm. uh, GitHub itself. People will hard code mm. keys into their projects. Yeah. And people find access into those projects and start looking through the, the code and go, oh, this is AWS secret key. Sweet. And that's account ID. I'll take that. Thank you. And now I've created a profile in AWS CLI. And yay, I do things. Change all your admin passwords. Yeah. You no longer have access to your platform. Yeah. You know? How much How much did you, you give me to get that back? That's why it's important <laughs> to make sure that if you are using those public repos like that, you're doing proper code scrubbing. Like yeah. Take all of those secrets out because if I got access to the secret... I don't care what your passwords are. Yeah. I have access to your platform. And Daniel, you just made a, a great segue by saying, how much can I pay to get that back? <laughs> uh, which brings us, I think, to our next article, which this week is in our dough segment. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, so, do. Exactly. And I'm sure that's how they felt at T-Mobile when they... Uh, figured this one out. So this one comes to us from Vice.com, uh, specifically from Motherboard. Uh, T-Mobile secure. Uh, excuse me, I can't talk today. T-Mobile secretly bought its customer data from hackers to stop the leak. It failed. <laughs> At doing it secretly or uh, buying no, it back or both. <laughs> uh, to stop the leak. Ah. Uh, because they bought. Do you it. mean the hackers oh, weren't they? honest? It's exactly right. You see, they they were able to buy the information. Now, hold on, Peter. Wait. And they and, and I have it under good authority. They had a pinky swear that you exchange money, and that's a that's a lock solid deal on right the dark there. web. Yeah, yeah. On the dark <laughs> through uh, through the bitcoins. <laughs> no, so uh, actually Ethereum, I think in this case. But so basically, yeah, T-Mobile uh, was hacked, and uh, and. They, they saw that someone was uh, offering to sell personal data of 30 million customers for six Bitcoin, which is about $270,000. So basically, they hired a third-party firm. And whether or not uh, T-Mobile knew what the firm was going to do specifically uh, is unclear. But they basically went and they put down a deposit and said, give me some of the data. So $50,000, they got to see some of the data. And they said, yeah, that looks good. That's that's the data. So we'd like to buy it, give another hundred and fifty grand, and uh you know, and, and they put in the caveat, but we want exclusive rights to this. Oh, yeah. No, you got that. Uh, and then, of course, it was sold again and again. <laughs> and again. So I get a grin uh, again yeah. and again. I assume to Sprint and Verizon and uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. AT&T. Is Sprint still a thing? Did I just make Oh, uh, yeah. No, they, no, uh, they by... merged with T-Mobile, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> Sprint's like, oh crap! Why did we Son buy this? We already have it. Yeah. Uh, We're buying so, our own uh, data. So I guess the the takeaway here is uh, don't trust don't trust the the criminals because they're not nice. They've you already know, shown you. I'm gonna stealing. go with yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I mean, wouldn't that money have been better suited? Well, I, I don't know that this was ransomware because you know you could have used that money to. To pay, pay yeah, it wasn't account. ransomware. It's not like it said that they had crypto locked up their files. They had exfiltrated yeah. that data, and they were saying, "Please don't sell this data." And they're right. like, "What do you give me?" And they're like, "How about solid hundred thousand But the thing is, they didn't go to they didn't go to the hackers as T-Mobile and say, "Hey, we're T-Mobile. What can we pay you to no. not have this go away?" They they hired a third party who was who word was on the street. Posing. It was Mandiant. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, so they were posing kind of as, yeah, we we want this data. Give us this data, you know. But, yeah. Uh, so you know. Well, the third party, like, uh, I I, th I didn't read it that way. I read that they were just saying, hey, we'd love to buy that data, and you stop selling it. We are an intermediate between you. Oh, see, I, I and the third it. party. I didn't take it as they were like, hey, guy, love to totally buy that Let's sketchy. See. Because why would that stop them from selling it to any other person? Because as they hired a third party to purchase, quote, exclusive access to the database to prevent right. it being sold to, to criminals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could see I could see that going either way. Yeah. Going, you know, hey, we'll, we'll play their game, you know, or or saying, yeah, we're we just don't want to directly buy from you our own data back, so we're going to use an intermediary. Yeah. It's basically like um, laundering their data. Where did that data come from? Well, here's the yeah. thing. I got a coin laundry. Your data has been <laughs> yeah. But even even I don't if, like thing of car washes. Even if they got exclusive uh, access to it and didn't see it popping up again, you know, we know you know that that whatever hacker kept that 
that copy for themselves as well. So oh, yeah. it's not like the in this case, social security numbers, driver's license numbers, yeah. and, and going with names and emails was not already out there and compromised. So it's not like T-Mobile could have said, "Oh, you know what? We got it." Yeah. You know, Good job, fellas. Yeah, dodged a bullet there because <laughs> yeah. the, the, a breach is a breach, and you still got to report that. And you, yeah. And so I don't, I don't understand. I guess the the point here. I guess they're and the fact that they try to do it secretly again. If you've been breached. You got to kind of own up to that stuff, especially if you work in European countries. They find yeah. out you didn't do that. Mm-hmm. That ends companies. Oh, yeah. Yeah. they coming for that money. They're going to make you feel it. What is this about NVIDIA at the end? Is it the, the lapsus. Is it the same group? No, lapsus? they're saying that like lapsus. They, they, they wanted to talk about like a lot of companies will oh. do other well, things that, back. that are not, um, they're frowned upon, like hacking yeah. back, right? That was a couple of weeks ago we talked about that, if you yeah. missed that, where Lapsus uh, hacked NVIDIA hacked and NVIDIA, NVIDIA oh, was yeah. like, hacked yep. back and, he did Lapsus. And found that they're not as good at hacking yeah. as, 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 <laughs> as NVIDIA is. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and, but, yeah, NVIDIA gave them well, yeah, both but, barrels. But they, but they came back. They, they, they did. They hit they again. A, no, they, they, then they attacked somebody else. It was a big hack. Yeah, but... I, it was like a couple weeks ago. Like I'm just saying, if you ago. hit the back, then all they're going to do is hit you again. You know, you're not... We're not ending the Maybe. war. With, yeah. I don't know. I, I think mean, they, need, you might make a, a, a powerful enemy. We need Malaysian AI <laughs> to get Sentence. back in here yeah. and uh, yeah. and take care of this cuz they'll they'll know what to do. Malaysian AI is just showing me pictures of kittens. It's weird. <laughs> well, that's if that's the punishment you Your deserve. sentence is kittens. <laughs> they they know. They have to take like, care of them or they're going to like claw me to death. What's I don't understand the sentencing. Whichever. whichever. <laughs> what they know. They know. The AI they, they gets don't need it. you to know. That's, right. that's how it works. And then 3,000 years in history, as we evolved, we realized that kittens are the worst form of punishment ever sure. for some strange reason. Egyptians do that. The AI the just reached it there faster. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Hey, want to let you know about uh, a little webinar we got coming up. Uh, first of all, you can check out all of our webinars over at itpro.tv slash webinars. It's where you can register for the upcoming ones and see all the past ones. But we've got one happening uh, today on this this very day, uh, so when you're done watching this, or, or hit pause if it's near two hit o'clock pause. Eastern, <laughs> and run over there. But it's replacing CentOS in production environments. Where to turn for alternatives? Uh, Thursday, April twenty first, two p.m. Eastern time, with Don Pizzette and this guy. That's West right. Brian, you got to you got to run in a second. Uh, you got to it, unless it's after two. And hey, good job. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> <Depending on laughs> when you're watching this. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, we, I mean, we've talked a lot on this show about CentOS and mm-hmm. uh, and and the changes they've made, where people are now saying, "Hey, we got to find something else for our production environment." So mm-hmm. check out that webinar. Don's going to list all the different options available for you. What, what are the ones we talk about? Rocky and Alma. Or Al- the, Alma, I think, is the the, the one that's yeah. uh, got the committee behind it. But we'll let uh, you'll just have yeah. to you'll have to see. Uh, you'll Don. have to see. Yeah. yeah. Tune in. We're, we're not spoiling it. But <laughs> don't worry if you're watching this after uh, that time. Like I said, head over to itpro.tv. Slash webinars, you can still watch the recording of it, which should be up about 24 hours after the webinar itself. So you're set there. And while you're on that internet, head over to uh, to technado.com here. Uh, you can uh, see all the latest episodes. You can get some swag. Ooh, like the sticker I have on my my laptop there. You can also uh, meet the team. Uh, Don, who's not even here, uh, no. but he's he's there. It doesn't on the even website. exist. You he got attacked by us. kittens. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. You can meet him in Kentucky. Yeah. Exactly. You can click that big orange button in the corner that says sponsored by IT Pro TV as well. And you can use that to get 30% off the lifetime of your personal plan. Did you say 30? I did say 30. Not 29. Three zero. And not quite 31. Percent. But 30. That's Anything more than that would be... Would yeah, be right. You're just showing off. Cutting our, yeah. our own feet off here. To, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you can uh, request a team trial as well if you want to see all the great features available to teams, uh, like the Pro Portal and all that. That great stuff is over there as well at uh, at IT Pro TV. So technator.com uh, and then the big orange button in the corner. And while you're on technator.com, send in some viewer mail. Let's tell Daniel why he's wrong. Let's. Uh, I don't want that. Which one <laughs> were we, we going to tell you you were wrong about? Stop. Was it about? Why uh, I got to be wrong one? How come you can't be wrong? Because I didn't make any you did. factual statements. You can tell me I was wrong. <laughs> I about asked him. you. I asked you for the uh, for facts, and I, we got to get the gloves out here, guys. I feel like that's not right. I proved that I, feel I like didn't it's a know UFC anything. fight. We got to be like, get it on. 
Uh, I, I play devil's advocate <laughs> in this show. Uh, I play the role of the person that doesn't know and has you. Yeah, the role. Oh, yeah. I like how you air quoted that. Role. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. For those li- just listening, those were air quotes. Yeah. Peter has really? an IQ of yeah. a buck ninety. All he does is listen to tech stuff all yeah. day long. <laughs> yeah. For those of you not uh, who are just listening, yes, I'm, you know, 140 pounds, and I just uh, I just know all these things about technology. So, hundred. Are you the smallest person on earth? Like 140 pounds? Yeah, that's offensive to our sound guy. I don't there. think so. <laughs> he's he's over that, right? Uh, if he's wet. Uh, <laughs> we'll find out. Depends on how big his hat is. He's not listening. I can see him running around yeah. outside. So. Yeah, he's losing weight. Yeah. All right, we gotta we gotta run into a weigh in. Um, okay. But this is fun. Thank you so much, Wes, uh, for joining us this week. And yeah, you know, I, I, I like Don, but you know, I don't mind when he's not here because we get Wes. So yeah, there we go. Well, yeah. anytime you guys want to have me. Well, it's a good week to have you too when we're talking about you know the ram and stuff. That's we'll put down like a. Like a bearskin rug, you know, a faux bearskin mm-hmm. rug, and then you can just lay on it. Oh man, for the I next got that. one. Or you yeah. get like a west skin rug. Yeah, a yeah. west skin rug. Can I have like a bathrobe and a smoking pipe? Yeah, you know? sure. I'll give you mine. Yeah. <laughs> we have Ronnie. He's got a spare. That's yeah. right. We got we got a spare. I think. We keep one just in case. <laughs> All right. Thanks everybody for watching, and we will see you next week right here on Technado with John Pizzette.